Hi, we're still in section one, and this is the lecture in which I'm going to discuss the various tools that you need throughout the course. In the next lecture, I'll be talking about the various parts and we'll close the section by talking about software. So, what other tools you need? Very simple, you're gonna need a multimeter, breadboard, wires, and power supplies. And of course, you'll need an Arduino, but not in order to play around with the Arduino, but just to use it in order to demonstrate how some of the parts that we'll be discussing uh, work around the Arduino. First, the breadboard. It's not really important what kind of breadboard you have uh, in terms of the size, at least the circuits that we'll be building are fairly small with only a few components. So if, even uh, a mini breadboard at this size uh, will do just fine. If you want a little bit more space, then go for one of those. And the nice thing about this larger type of breadboard is that it gives you a couple of points to which you can attach uh, different voltages. So for example, a five volt here and uh, a nine volt here on the red. So um, uh, just pick a breadboard and go with it. Uh, I'll probably be using a lot of this mini sized breadboard. Once you've got your breadboard sorted, you need to figure out what your power supplies are gonna be like or power supply. You've got a few options here again, and you can choose whichever you have handy or whichever you feel more comfortable with. Um, you can go with a battery pack like this one. So a bunch of AA or even AAA batteries, so even a nine volt battery will do. And just connect the leads to your breadboard and you're good to go. Or you can go with a power supply like this one, which plugs onto the power rails of your breadboard. So either in my larger breadboard, this is gonna fit just perfectly fine, or in my mini breadboard, again, no problem, you can power your circuits like this. And the nice thing about that is that it provides on the, on the board 3.3 uh, or five volts outputs. So you can choose your rating. It's got a switch on it. So you can turn power on and off. You can power it from the USB, so any USB adapter or even your computer can provide power to your circuits. I would recommend a USB adapter, not your computer. And you can power it from a barrel connector power supply lead. Very nice and handy. Another thing that you can do as far as a power supply is concerned is that you can use a benchtop power supply. I'll show you mine. So let me turn the camera slightly and move this out of the way. There you go. So that's my benchtop power supply. So this is adjustable. I can turn the knob here and I can get uh, voltages and amperage limits as well to exactly the points where I want them to be. And I can use the leads to power the circuit on the breadboard. I've got two power supplies, so at the same time I can get two different levels of voltages and amperage limits as well. So I'll be making a lot more use of my benchtop power supplies than all the other options that I discuss. It's just as easier for me. But uh, again, as far as your power supplies are concerned, uh, I think you can easily do everything that you need uh, using either a battery pack like this, or a USB barrel connector powered uh, PCB that plugs onto your breadboard like this one. Okay, so that's the power, sorry, that's the breadboard and the power supply. Then in order to put your circuits together and wire them, you will need jumper wires. So jumper wires come in a variety of different types. The ones that I will be using a lot are these flexible male to male jump wires that come in different lengths and colors. But I will also be using um, solid core 
jumper wires like these. So the nice thing about these on the breadboard is that it just makes it easier to show where a wire starts and where it ends because it's not flexible, it's just straight. So I'll be making more use of these solid uh, jumper wires. Uh, they're still flexible, but I'll be keeping them straight so that you can see what the connections are. Again, they come in different colors and lengths. Um, I suggest that you use whichever you, one you have handy. Uh, and again, the circuits are going to be small, so we are only going to need maybe a maximum of five or six pieces of jumper wires. So you don't need to make a pack <laughs> for this course. Okay, so that's it. Jumper wires. There's one more thing. You're going to need a multimeter. Now it can be a very simple multimeter. It doesn't have to be something complicated like this. Uh, all you really need to be able to measure are uh, the amperage, so the current and the voltage in your circuit. Uh, we will be using a couple of other features as well, at least on this one, we'll be using the capacitance feature and uh, the diode test feature. And even the cheapest $10 multimeters these days have these features on them. If yours doesn't, again, no big deal. Uh, you don't really need to go out and buy one just for these two functions, at least not for the purposes of understanding the content in this course. Um, apart from this particular multimeter, I'm also going to be using this one here. So my benchtop multimeter, give you a better view of this. I'll be using these two instruments to make measurements, simultaneous measurements to the different parts of the circuit, either um, voltage at the same time or voltage plus amperage. And that's all the tools that you need to have available for this course. Let's move on to the next lecture now, where we'll talk about the parts.